The remnants of massive stars that explode as supernovae are the primary source of black holes. Neutron stars can't trap light because they aren't massive enough to form from smaller stars. If the star's total mass is large enough about three times the mass of the sun theoretically, it can be proven that no force can keep the star from collapsing under the influence of gravity. As the star disintegrates, however, a peculiar phenomenon takes place. When a star's surface approaches the event horizon, local time slows down compared to the time recorded by distant observers. After a star's surface reaches that point of no return, the collapse process is frozen in place and the star ceases to shrink. Black holes created by cosmic collisions are even more massive than those created by supernovae. NASA's SWIFT telescope first observed transient, intense gamma-ray bursts in the months following its launch in December 2004. The Chandra X-ray Observatory and the Hubble Space Telescope also picked up on the intense explosions, leading researchers to conclude that these powerful explosions result from the merger of a black hole and a neutron star, forming yet another black hole. Even though we know how black holes are made at their most basic level, we still don't know how they can exist on two such different size scales. On one end, you have the many black holes that are all that's left of once massive stars. These stellar mass black holes range in mass from roughly 10 to 24 times that of the Sun, and can be found across the cosmos. When another star comes close enough to a black hole, part of the matter in its surroundings is sucked into the black hole by its gravity, emitting X-rays that can be detected by astronomers. Based on the number of massive stars in the Milky Way, scientists estimate there could be as many as a billion black holes. At the other extreme, there are the supermassive black holes, millions to billions of times as massive as the Sun. Supermassive black holes are thought to reside at the galactic core of nearly all major galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Astronomers can monitor their effects on nearby stars and gas to help identify them. Researchers have long held the firm belief that no black holes exist in the intermediate size range. However, recent data from Chandra, XMM-Newton and Hubble bolster the case for the existence of black holes of intermediate size. The accumulation of extremely massive stars, which then collapse to form intermediate mass black holes, is a potential mechanism for forming supermassive black holes through a chain reaction of colliding stars in compact star clusters. Following this, the star clusters fall to the galaxy's center, where the intermediate mass black holes merge to form a supermassive black hole.